The topic is desquamative gingivitis. Now this desquamative gingivitis, according to the definition, they say that it is a non-specific term which denotes or which denotes a chronic diffuse kind of an inflammation of the gingiva with the sloughing of the surface epithelium that can be found in several mucosal diseases. So most of the times when they describe desquamative gingivitis, they don't tell it as a disease condition. What they say about desquamative gingivitis is that is one of the clinical signs of an underlying disease. So the underlying diseases can be a mucocutaneous disease or it can be anything else. Now that we will see a little later. So when you go a little back into the history, this kind of the disease was identified way back in 1894 by Toms and he's, he was the first one to recognize this disease. And then it was in 1931, Gaudi who gave a direct cause to effect relationship. It was Prince in 1932 who coined the term chronic desquamative or chronic diffuse desquamative gingivitis. And then it was Merritt who took over in 1933 and then he said let's remove the diffuse term and let's just keep it as chronic desquamative gingivitis. And then 1947 it's Scott and Masler who gave the term gingivosis. And then in 1960, McCarthy, he said it's not a specific disease, but it is a manifestation of several diseases. This is what is important. Now, discomative gingivitis itself is not a disease or a condition. It is a sign or a manifestation of various diseases. Now, let's go into a little bit detail about this discomative gingivitis. Now, it is a disorder in which the gingiva shows a chronic discomation of the epithelium leading to chronic redness and sometimes soreness of the gingiva. It denotes a particular clinical picture or a particular clinical manifestation. Now, most of the common uh, discomative cases have been reported in women and they may also be seen in children. But then 48% of the cases who were having discomative gingivitis were having your cicatricial kind of a pemphigoid as an underlying pathology. And 23.6% of the cases who were diagnosed were of having discomative gingivitis were suffering from lichen planus. And just 2.3% of the cases were rec 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 recorded with pemphigus as being the underlying pathology for showing the features of discomative gingivitis. Now, if you see the etiology, it was McCarthy who gave certain etiological factors. He said it's multifactorial in etiology and he gave it can be an underlying dermatol or a derm uh, dermatological pathology which is showing the symptoms or which are showing the signs and symptoms of your discomative gingivitis. Apart from that, some hormonal changes like your gonadal hormones changes have also been reported to show the features of discomative gingivitis. And then your abnormal response to irritation, a chronic infection, your idiopathic cause, there's no exact cause and then allergic reactions have also been reported as being the underlying etiology for your discomative gingivitis. Now, if you see the classification, the classification is purely based on what is the underlying pathological conditions that can show discomative or that can manifest as discomative gingivitis. The dermatological disorders include your oral lichen planus, mucous membrane pemphigoid, your pemphigus vul vulgaris, your bullous pemphigoid, your erythema multiforme, linear immunoglobulin A, kind of a disease and then lupus erythematosus, epidermolysis bullosa and your dermatitis herpetiformis. Now apart from that the second classification system includes or sorry the second part of the classification or the subcategory includes your local hypersensitivity reactions which include your sodium laurel sulfate, your mouthwashes or any kind of a local hypersensitivity reactions to dental materials, drugs, cosmetics, your chewing gums and your synonym. And then miscellaneous reasons can be a chronic ulcerative kind of a stomatitis, your orofacial granulomatosis and your plasma cell gingivitis. Let's go into detail about the clinical features. How does this disease manifest or how does this manifestation observed? Now you can cat characterize, it is basically characterized or, or the, uh, the main feature would be an intense red or an erythema of the gingiva. And then you have desquamation of the entire epithelium and an ulceration of the free as well as your attached gingiva. And then us usually it is asymptomatic but sometimes some patients give symptoms of burning sensation or generalized soreness of the mouth. If it is symptomatic, exactly, the pain ranges from mild burning sensation to an intense kind of a pain. 
the usually uh, the use of the most clinical and the laboratory uh, laboratory investigations have detected that 75 percent of your discomative cases are because of your ge dermatological genesis okay means the etiology is some reason from the dermatological pathology and that is showing your uh, uh, showing as or that is manifesting itself as your discomative gingivitis and 95 percent of all the dermatological conditions your cicatricial pemphigoid and lichen planus hold the more or hold a major uh, group of uh, conditions under dermatological reasons to manifest as discomative gingivitis now glickman and small uh, Smolaw, he classified or he gave the clinical features can be categorized as mild, moderate and severe. If it is a mild form, there is just a diffuse erythema. It's usually painless and the age would range from 17 to 23 years, most commonly affecting the females. If it's the moderate form, then age criteria would be between 30 to 40 years and the patient gives a chief complaint of burning sensation, your sensitivity to thermal changes and then inhalation of air also would become extremely painful because of the desquamation of the epithelium and exposing the underlying connective tissue. Apart from that, you find when you visualize the areas or visualize uh, the clinical signs would be the bright red grayish areas of the gingiva with some patchy distribution of hemorrhagic areas can also be seen. The surface looks uh, smooth and shiny and then the consistency would be soft and there is a positive Nikolsky sign. There's a slight pitting on pressure. The remainder of the mucosa is also extremely smooth and shiny. That is just apart from your attached and marginal gingiva, the remainder of the mucosa will also look shiny and smooth. The brushing will result again in painful ulcerations. If you see the severe form of discomative gingivitis, the lingual surfaces are less severely inflamed or affected when compared to your labial surfaces. It is mainly characterized by a scattered, irregularly shaped areas of denudation and then a striking red appearance of the tissues and the gingiva separating these areas will appear grayish blue uh, with overall speckled kind of a appearance. And then if you see the surface epithelium, it is shredded or it is friable. It's very much friable and then it can be just peeled off even with slight uh, into small patches even with slight touch. The areas of involvement usually shift from one area to another to different locations in the gingiva. The mucous membrane of the oral cavity also will appear red and it will appear smooth and shiny and the patient cannot tolerate coarse food, spicy food or even uh, your, uh, con uh, your bakery products or your temperature changes. A difference in the temp temperature changes cannot be tolerated by the patient, especially your hot food. There would be a burning sensation and soreness in the entire mouth and a constant dryness has also been reported. Now let's see how do you diagnose these cases. We all know that discomative gingivitis itself is a clinical manifestation. So it's basically a clinical term. It's not a diagnosis per se. But in order to establish an appropriate therapeutic approach and management, the clinical examination of the tissues and, uh, and a thorough history should be coupled with a good medical history and some histological and immunological studies and reports have to be clubbed in order to give a correct or a confirmatory diagnosis. Nevertheless, one third of the cases still remain unexplained. So you have, to th you have to take a thorough clinical history, oral examination, send for the biopsy and, uh, and then either for a, uh, once you take a biopsy, either you send for the IHC that is immunohistochemistry or that is direct immunofluorescence or else your HNE staining. Let's go in detail about each one of the condition which is going to show or manifest as discomative gingivitis. The first one here would be lichen planus. We all know lichen planus is one of the most common uh, mucocutaneous disease which manifests bilaterally and uh, it usually manifests in the gingiva. Now it may also affect the skin and other areas of the oral cavity. The skin lesions will show typical something called as a Wickham's stray. Okay, they are white stray. The most of the common areas of the extraoral or the fle uh, frequently located areas would be the flexor aspects of your arms, thighs and even the neck. Now itching would be the common symptom here. Appearance, if you see the clinical appearance, it appears as different different ways. It can be a papular type of a lichen planus, erosive lichen planus, diffuse or an atrophic type of a lichen planus, reticular, plaque type or an ulcerative type. If you see the histopathology, now you have a sub-epithelial thick band of lymphocytes and macrophages which are right underneath your 
uh, sub uh, your epithelial lining okay you find it as a band of epithelial uh, uh, band of lymphocytes and macrophages which are exactly beneath your sub epithelial area the epithelium the changes that you can see can be a hyperkeratosis or that is your hyper ortho or a parakeratinization apart from that you find some typical characteristic feature is the civete bodies now which are dyskeratotic basal cells now when you take an ihc or an immunohistochemistry you can see deposits of fibrin in the basement membrane and even deposits of immunoglobulin m how do you treat the cases the treatment would be a meticulous plaque control now that would if you do a meticulous plaque control that would be sufficient enough to improve the patient's condition the keratotic lesions are asymptomatic does not require any treatment if painful cases then you can put put them on some topical and systemic corticosteroid therapy or uh, if it is too severe then maybe you have to harvest a graft from the palate and then try to cover the discomated areas now going to pemphigoid now pemphigoid is again a group of disorders wherein there are auto antibodies that is there are antibodies which are produced against the own body's own cells exactly towards the components of your basement membrane now you know that the basement membrane is the one which links your epithelium with that of the connective tissue right now the basement membrane mostly holds your hemidesmosomes which is basically your cell to matrix interactions now antibodies are directed against these hemidesmosomes now if you see the conditions under your pemphigoid the first one would be your bullous pemphigoid now, this predominantly affects the skin but oral involvement is also seen the you find cutaneous uh, bullae or the large bullae or fluid filled areas now these bullae usually coalesce with each other and produce finally a kind of an ulcer called as a serpiginous ulcer now this most of the time if if uh, the bullous pemphigoid if it affects the oral mucosa any kind of the mucosal areas then you re-term it as mucous membrane pemphigoid the clinical features majority of them are would be the females and then mean age of onset would be greater than or equal to 50 years of age the oral cavity would be the first site of disease activity and it presents intensely erythematous attached gingival areas the positive feature here is a positive nikolsky sign now this positive nikolsky sign what is nikolsky sign is nothing but because of the destroyed adhesion between the epithelium and the connective tissue you get an sub epithelial kind of a bulla and this when you press on the tissue external surface on the tissue you find a blister formation and this would be called as a uh, Nikolsky's sign now, uh, now the typical features of uh, bullous mucous membrane pemphigoid include an uh, intact bulla are often clear to yellowish or maybe hemorrhagic in appearance now this is due to the separation of the epithelium from the connective tissue at the junction that is a basement membrane junction the exposed blood vessels inside the bulla the bulla actually uh, rupture rapidly leaving a fibrin coated ulcers coming to cicatricial pemphigoid now again this is you again you get a sub epithelial bulla formation you have antibodies directed against your hemidesmosomes okay now most of the uh, uh, cicatricial pemphigoid lesions are ocular lesions sometimes you can have a thick scar formation which even tries to close or it can lead to a complete blindness if you see the histopathological section now you have a separation and the connective tissue and in between that you have a big bullous formation okay and you have an unspecific kind of an inflammatory reaction seen there if you see an ihc examination you have deposits of complement c3 and igg the treatment again professional treatment atraumatic plaque control apart from that you need a medical consent and a medical physician's help in order to treat this you have to put the patient on some immunosuppressive drugs because it's an anti it's an autoimmune kind of a disease apart from that supplement with or supportive therapy with uh, systemic corticosteroids coming to the next group that is your pemphigus vulgaris now pemphigus are a kind of mucocutaneous disorders which usually affect or produce auto antibodies against your desmosomes your desmosomes are nothing but they connect your cell to cell so most of the times the your epithelial cell is attached to your epithel another epithelial cell by your desmosomes if auto antibodies are directed or they are produced in the body against the antigens that is your desmosomal antigens then it will result in what is called as an intra epithelial bullet and the one and this is a characteristic feature of your pemphigus and pemphigus vulgaris is one of the most important component or one of the subcategory of your pemphigus uh, kind of group of diseases most of the time this pemphigus uh, vulgaris is can occur at any age and it is 
mostly seen in the middle aged or elderly individuals again i told you have a widespread bulla formation and most of the times the bulla are in the intra epithelial region early lesions may just look like your uh, aphthous ulcers widespread erosions are common at later stages the gingival involvement you have a painful desquamation lesions or as either erosions or ulcerations of the gingiva once the bulla rupture how do you diagnose histopathological sections you see your intra epithelial bulla formation that is a typical cell called as your zanc cell that is because of your the two cell, the epithelial cells they don't have, they are non adhering to each other because of the antibodies directed against your desmosomes if you see the ihc you have precipitation of your c3 and ig g kind of immunoglobulin and you have some circulating antibodies against your intraepithelial adhesion molecules the treatment again you have to refer the patient to a dermatologist and then or a general medicine specialist and then put the patient probably on corticosteroid therapy systemic corticosteroid therapy where if you're going to recognize this disease late it can even turn out to be fatal the supplementary uh, local treatment would be scaling again a gentle plaque uh, uh, meticulous plaque control and uh, 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 supported by your topical corticosteroid therapy with some antimicrobial rinses like chlorhexidine erythema multiforme it's an acute sometimes recurrent kind of a mucocutaneous or a vesiculobullous lesion affecting the mucous membranes and the skin now your erythema multiforme is of two types you have the minor form and you have the major form the major form is also called as your steven johnson syndrome and the minor form is a moderate kind of a involvement the major form it's a widespread involvement it can include your ocular oral and the genital lesions in addition to the skin involvement the pathogenesis remains unclear but they have said it can be because of some virus activation including your herpes simplex viruses if you see the clinical features it can occur at any age most of the times in the younger to the middle age group now about oral involvement can be 20 to 60% of the cases show oral involvement the characteristic lesions would be swollen lips often with an extensive crust formation in of the vermilion border of the lip the bulla usually rupture and then they leave extensive ulcers and usually they are covered by a heavy yellowish kind of a fibrinous exudate which is called as your pseudo membrane if you see the skin lesions you get a typical bull's eye like lesion or also called as your target lesions histopathology again you have an intra or a sub epithelial bulla or separation of the epithelium to connective tissue the treatment would be so systemic corticosteroids or a topical treatment as an as the required uh, supplementary treatment lupus erythematosus again it's a group of autoimmune connective tissue uh, disorders wherein your auto antibodies are directed towards the components of the cell it can be directed towards the nucleus or it can be directed towards the cytoplasm of the cell or to the cell membrane itself clinical features again women are most commonly affected than men and then the etiology of lupus erythematosus remains unknown but most of the deposits are because uh, most are antigen antibody related uh, playing complexes playing a role you have two forms you have your discoid lupus erythematosus and you have your systemic lupus erythematosus the discoid one is a mild form the systemic one would include all the systemic organs that is your kidney cvs lungs and your cns and even your bone marrow the characteristic is the typical butterfly shaped lesions okay which run from one area of the cheek they over, they run over the bridge of the nose and to involve the other side of the cheeks the histopathology you have some epithelial changes like hyperkeratosis you have a keratin plugging which is seen variation in epithelial thickness and then liquefactive degeneration of your basal cells and increase width of your basement membrane and then you find a sub epithelial connective tissue will show inflammation sometimes resembling your oral lichen planus IHC will show deposits of C3 and fibrin in the basement membrane again treatment would be systemic corticosteroid therapy supplemented with some anti-inflammatory treatment linear gingival uh, linear iga disease now this is uncommon mucocutaneous disorder sometimes the predilection is most commonly to females Exa uh, the clinical features include a pruritic kind of a vesiculobullous lesion the middle age or to the late age is uh, middle or the elderly age groups are the ones who are commonly affected the characteristic plaques of annular presentation surrounded by a peripheral rim of your 
blisters. The mucosal involvement is seen in just about 50 to 100 percent of the cases. The oral lesions show vesicles, the painful ulcerations or even erosions. The erosive gingivitis or chelitis is also seen. Hard and soft palate are commonly involved followed by your tonsillar pillars and your buccal and lingual gingiva. Occasionally, the oral lesions only show manifestations for several years, but before, uh, your oral lesions show manifestations much before your uh, cutaneous lesions. IHC, if you take under immunohistochemistry, you find linear IgA deposits in your epithelial connective tissue interface. And the treatment would be combinations of dapsone with sulfones and then small amounts of corticosteroids like prednisone. Chronic ulcerative stomatitis, again it's a rare mucocutaneous disorder, the first described in about 19, early 1900s, primarily it affects elderly females and then patient present with discumative gingivitis that is refractory to treatment. So the beautiful thing here is they are refractory, they don't respond to any kind of treatment that you give them. So Ig, under direct immunofluorescence, you find deposition of IgG and at the basal one-third of the epithelium. Under indirect immunofluorescence, you see it's the stratified squamous epithelium, specific anti-nuclear antigens. How do you treat it? Again, systemic hydroxychloroquine or you can give high-potency corticosteroids. Drug eruptions, now there is an eruptive skin and oral lesions. The drug acts as an allergen creating a kind of an antibody response in the host. There are types you have your stomatitis medicamentosa and stomatitis veneta. Now this stomatitis veneta is also called as your contact dermatitis or con sorry contact stomatitis. It is due to the local use of the drug. The, what are the various drugs that can cause? Your barbiturates, you have your sulfonamides, you have your phenophthalene, iodides, bromides, aspirin burns, chlorexidin and even the drugs that are used for cancer, that is chemotherapy and then cinnamon, cinnamon compounds. Coming to epidermolysis bullosa, it again a heterogeneous group of disorders with again a blistering mucocutaneous disorders. Now this depends on the defective mechanism of cellular cohesion. It can be various types. You have uh, epidermolysis bullosa simplex, junctional, dystrophic and hemidesmosal. The miscellane other miscellaneous conditions which can represent or which can show a manifestation of your discomative gingivitis include your factitious lesions, your candidiasis, your graft versus host reactions, you have your vaginous granulomatosis so and so on like your Kindler syndrome, your foreign body reactions or gingivitis, even squamous cell carcinoma. Now that would uh, end all your uh, topics or, or all your uh, conditions that are uh, showing discumative gingivitis. In order to conclude, I would like to say that first you need to identify after a thorough history, first you need to identify what is the underlying pathology and treat the underlying systemic pathology and then the supplemental therapy. So that would solve the problem as a whole and not just mask the or try to uh, solve only the discumative gingivitis. Thank you.